Electronic waste is having a huge impact on the environment by contaminating soil, water and even the air around us. But there is a solution to this problem. What if the next time you bought a kettle on Amazon, they took away your old one for free? In the UK, we actually produce more e-waste per person than any country in the world apart from Norway. Everyone each year is producing 23.9 kilograms worth of electronic waste, which is more than you'd be allowed to take on to an airplane in a big suitcase. And that compares to, to a smaller average in the EU, it's just 16 kilograms per person. And actually the global average is only around seven kilograms per person. So we're three times worse than the average country. E-waste is complicated. So here are three areas we're going to focus on and what we think can fix them. Repairability, making recycling easier, and wasting precious materials. So why is it so hard to repair broken electronics? Yeah, so, I mean, manufacturers are doing everything to lock out independent repairs by making it difficult for them to access information about certain product and how to repair it. But these are restricted from manufacturers, but often third parties get them through other people, through leaks, but that's not ideal. And then there's the affordability of spare parts, where manufacturers are keeping the cost of genuine spare parts artificially high. Another issue manufacturers have created is the gluing and soldering of parts. Instead of simply screwing components into devices or using ports that components can slip in and out of, manufacturers have opted to start using glue to fix components in place and solder to connect components together, with the claim that this makes devices more durable. Manufacturers themselves have products that show that they can both be durable and repairable. So this question of whether making something repairable makes it less, let's say, waterproof, it's bogus. Imagine you need to change the tire on a car, but the wheel has been welded to the axle. That tire just became a lot more difficult and expensive to change. You know, with too much glue and with soldered in components, the price of repairs goes up and DIY repairs become much less viable. So if electronics can't be repaired, how are they being thrown away? In the UK, we create 1.5 million tonnes of e-waste a year. Two thirds of that is not recycled. Of that two thirds, 155,000 tonnes are thrown out in household waste, sending it to landfill or incineration. The amount of e-waste we throw out every year weighs the same as 15 Eiffel Towers. So what can be done to encourage more people to recycle their electronics? As of January 1st, 2021, all high street electronic retailers in the UK must take any small e-waste a customer brings them and send it on to a recycling facility. This responsibility only applies to high street retailers. Why do the online companies get exemption from this? Some online retailers have voluntarily implemented this into their service, such as Dixon's Carphone. Yes, we rolled out our small box collection service um, at the end of 2018. In its full first year of operation 2019, we actually saw an increase of 215% of small electricals that we collected. Whenever a customer um, has a home delivery for a big, big item, such as a fridge, washing machine or a large screen TV, we have a service in place where we will take away their old one. Um, in addition to that service, at the same time, they can hand over any small electrical item and we'll take that away for free to be recycled as well. So it is perfectly possible for online retailers to adopt a convenient e-waste recycling service. Yet Amazon, the UK's biggest online retailer, does not offer an easy to use service like this. I think the reason must be very simple, that actually it's a bit of a faff and it adds extra cost to them. And so they're not interested in, in providing that level of support. And that's, that's very distressing. If we make e-waste recycling easy, we will get higher recycling rates. It's that simple. Imagine a world where every online retailer, including Amazon, picked up your unwanted small electronics from your front door whenever you received a delivery from them. If it was that convenient, wouldn't you recycle more? Sending e-waste to landfill means we lose critical raw materials, also known as CRMs. So these are minerals and metals that exist in the earth in finite quantities, and they're also things that we tend to need a lot of and are increasingly needing more of. CRMs come from all over the world, and most crucially, are in limited supply. So many of these critical raw materials are used in our personal electronic devices, like our phones and our laptops, but they're also really important for things like healthcare, surgical implants, new medicines, and also renewable energy and electric vehicles. Some CRMs are so rare they are predicted to run out completely by the end of the century. 
at the moment we're we're really losing a lot of value we're losing a lot of critical raw materials because at the moment still there's really a need to have processes but also the infrastructure to go hand in hand with that um, to extract these type of critical raw materials uh, from our devices um, more efficiently. We need to invest in the science. So at the moment, the science to extract the really small quantities of metal and separate them out from each other is still in its infancy. So that's a really important thing that we have to work on. So how do we fix the e-waste problem? Make electronics easier and more affordable to repair. Require all retailers, including online ones, to be responsible for the collection and disposal of small unwanted electronics. Invest more money in adopting more efficient recycling processes. By accepting recommendations like this, maybe we can make pictures like this a thing of the past. As a House of Commons committee, we're in a position where we can actually make recommendations on issues like this directly to the government. So we did. As part of our inquiry, Electronic Waste and the Circular Economy, we made these three recommendations, as well as 24 others, to the government who are obligated to respond to them. And they have. The government response includes new rules for manufacturers, who must now make spare parts available for white goods such as fridges and washing machines, along with electrical goods like TVs. And from the summer of 2021, these new rules will be a legal obligation in the UK, marking the first steps towards a circular economy, where we use, reuse and recycle products. If you want to read our report in full, along with the government's response to our recommendations, you can at parliament.uk forward slash eacom.